Okay, sine and uh, cosine curves. Um, when we see a question involving sine and cosine curve, and we should really have in mind the two standard curves. So if we take cos x, then cos x is like the runny nose. So it goes from 1 down to minus 1, and cuts at 90, bottoms at 180, cuts at 270, and then the period finishes at 360. And the sine curve, well, that starts at 0 and again does the same kind of wave as the cos curve as its major points at 90, 180, 270 and 360. So if we have those two curves in mind then we can start seeing uh, how the question works. So what have we been told? Uh, we've got a sine curve, they want to get the coordinates of P. Well P is the maximum point at the vertex at 90 so the coordinate would be 90 and the maximum value of the sine curve, the ordinary sine curve, is 1, so the coordinate will be 91. The Q point is where the curve crosses the x axis at 0 there, so it's going to be 180, 0. Now, when it looks at um, the second part of the question, it's telling us that we've transformed the cos curve. So the original cos curve had the going from 1 to minus 1 and has a period of 360 degrees well here we've done two things we've stretched the original cos curve by 3 so we now know that the cos curve is still looking like the runny nose but this time we're going from 3 to minus 3 and the 2 inside uh, the function has actually stretched by a scale factor of a half so in other words the period is now 180 so our new values are going to be 45, 90, 135 and 180. So in other words our curve has halved its period and has stretched itself by an amplitude of 3 to minus 3. So let's have a look. What do they actually want? They want to know the coordinates of the R point. Well we can see from the transformed curve that it's going to be 45, 0. The S curve is where it's bottomed out, and it's sort of bottomed out at 90 and minus 3. So those will be the two coordinates by looking at the curve. So the R value is 45, 0, and the S value is where the curve bottomed out. Now the sine and cosine curves can get a bit more complicated than that, so we need to look at uh, something a bit more complicated. And here they're telling us that this sine curve has been transformed in some way. So again, if we start with the basic sine curve, it will give us an idea of uh, what we're doing. So 1 to minus 1, 90, 180, 270, and the full period at 360. And we can see that we've translated the curve up. So the best way of doing this is to look for where the new axis point has moved to. So the line of symmetry is going to be halfway through here. So original axis went through the zero and the original axis has now moved up to where four is. So we can now see that the original curve has been translated up at four spaces. So P will equal four. Now we can see that the x plus 90 uh, part of the function change has moved the curve 90 degrees to the left. So we're now talking about the curve starting there and it's moved 90 degrees to the left. So what was 90 is now at 0. What was at 180 now happens at 90. What happened at 270 now happens at 180 and what happened at 360 now happens at 270 and what happened at 360 uh, sorry at uh, 450 now happens at 360 so we can see that the curve has moved over and that's the new positions of the values the cross points so let's have a look um, q is the translation um, the stretch, so we've gone from 4 to 6, so it's going to be a stretch of 2. So Q is 2. So in other words, what went from 1 to minus 1 has now got a gap of 4. So what was a gap of 2 is now a gap of 4, 
so it's been multiplied by 2. The line y equals 3 intersects the curve at the points a, b and c. So basically, let's have a look what's happened. So we've gone across there, so we know that's going to be the point 3. So if we look at the translated curve, we can see that Let's have a look, that's going to be 90, and it bottoms out at 180, so that's going to be 180, and we've got a line of symmetry going on here, so halfway between, 3, 2, so let's have a look, they've told us A as coordinate 120, so it's a line of symmetry, so 60 degrees away. So this must be 60 degrees away, so that's going to be 240. So B is going to be 240, comma 3. Again, from the coordinate they told us, 123, we knew that was 180, line of symmetry, 60 degrees away there, so 60 degrees away there. The coordinate at the point C, well again, we can look at the what happens to the major points. So 90, it bottoms out at 180, that became 270, that became 360, um, that became 450, and it bottoms out at 450, 90 on is 540. Well, again, from the symmetry points, we can see that we're 60 degrees that side, so it must be 60 degrees that side, so that's making it 480. So the point C is 480, comma 3. Okay, it's on the line y equals 3. So again, it's looking at the transformation of the uh, function and looking at the original function. So the original function, how it's transformed 90 degrees, translated sorry 90 degrees to the left because of the plus 90, telling us where the major points are, and then we can put those numbers onto the uh, graph at the new center points, center axes and that allows us then to use the symmetry properties to get the answers we wanted. So quite a complex question, but using our rules of transformations of functions, it's allowed.